Yeah. Hi everyone, it's me. And today, let's buy some stuff from the supermarket together. Let's go. Some groceries. Okay, Mad Pat, focus up. It's go time. You have exactly one thing on your shopping list. So you're gonna there enter go. that grocery. Super saver, we sell for less. Store over there, you're gonna purchase one item and one item only, and you're gonna exit the grocery store with that one item. You're not falling for their psychological tricks this time, Matt Pat. Not again. Okay, here we go. Buying one thing. Woo! Leroy Jenkins! One hour later. One hour later. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, honey, we bought a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey, a lion, and a elephant! <laughs> How? Why? Where? Where do you find it? Which? Ow! How? <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory! Hello! The squeaky fourth shopping cart wheel of the theorist family of YouTube channels. Today we're talking about grocery stores. <laughs> and yes, I stand by that font choice and sound effect. I know your local grocery store may look all innocent and neighborhoody on the surface, but the truth is, it's using every sinister, underhanded tactic in the book to trick you into spending more. And you're falling for it. I mean, their tactics really work. According Psychological tactics. According to the Marketing Science Institute, 51% of items purchased at grocery stores are unplanned. And if a store really commits to full-on psychological warfare, that percentage can get as high as 68%. So don't let that cute little green awning or the flowers for sale out front distract you. The entrance to your local grocery store is the entrance to a world they control and they excel at exploiting. Their methods aren't only psychological in nature either. Grocery stores do do everything they can to keep you in the store longer and physically wear you down with scientific principles. But never fear, we here at Food Theory are here to show you, the consumer, how you can fight back. And it is a fight, because if you truly wish to beat the grocery store, you have to prepare as though you're headed into battle. First, let's remember what's at stake here. Your hard-earned money, and a lot of it. According to data compiled by USC's Department of Applied Psychology, the University of South Southern California, average I'm sorry, what? Is it correct? Oh, it's Department of University of Southern California. Applied Psychology, the average U.S. household spends $144 on groceries every week, and as much as $96 of that in one shopping trip alone. Sure, one impulse purchase here or there might seem like nothing, but it really starts to add up over time, and the grocery stores are in it for the long game. So it's important to not get bamboozled every time you step foot in a store, unless you're into that kind of thing. I'm just here to save you money, not to judge. But if you are the thrifty type, you're over Overall number one grocery shopping strategy. Your overall number one strategy. Grocery store strategy. To get in and get out as quickly as possible. According to 2013 research out of Bangor University, we as shoppers are at our most productive around the 23 minute mark into our shopping trip. But around the 40 minute mark, we stop thinking rationally about our spending and instead start making emotional purchases. We start buying what we want rather than what we need. This is known as decision fatigue. A we need an April. Um. Not a Dorito. Psychological principle that refers to the deteriorating quality of decisions made by an individual after a long session of decision making. The more you know, decision, drr, decisions are fatigue. Well, I hope that this can be very educational for you. If you this, let's review one more time. The deterioration quality of decision, uh, decisions made by an individual after a long session of decision making. Grocery stores understand the principles of decision fatigue, and they use it to their advantage in all different ways. According to Martin Lindstrom, author of Brandwash, tricks companies use to manipulate our minds and persuade us to buy, usually at least one essential item on a shopper's grocery list is a dairy product. And that's exactly why the dairy section can be found way 
way in the back of the store. It forces you, the customer, to spend time trekking through the entire building, even if Gogurt is the only thing on your list. And if you're anything like me, Gogurt is often the only thing on your list. Similarly, many stores play slow music. The idea here is to get you to relax, to take your time while shopping. The study using background music to affect the behavior of supermarket shoppers found that when grocery stores played slow music, their sales increased by nearly 40%. You heard that right, a 40% increase in the amount that people are spending from the music that is playing. The Yes, because this kind of calming, smoothing, relaxing music feels very comfortable and it just like, take your time, no worry, no rush. You can just take your time, pick more items, spend more money. Mm -hmm. Smooth jazz elevator jams that you're not even paying attention to. And that's precisely why it's so important to be aware of these sorts of tactics. They're subtle, you would never notice them, and they're varied. It's in your best interest to consciously make your shopping trips as efficient as possible. That means getting in and getting out fast. Yes, correct. This kind of productivity is very important. Get in, get out! ASAP. So now you're all ready to take on that grocery store. Ready for the most immersive experience you've ever had on YouTube? Say hello to your hands. Hi! That's right, your hands are shockingly white. Kind of pasty pale. As if they haven't seen daylight in a couple years. But I will say they're amazingly yes. proportional. And um, also, your hand has a band-aid on it because you're irresponsible around ovens. So fuck. So Matt, Pat, why? Why? Tell me on this. Get into character. You're standing outside the grocery store about to go in. You've done all the necessary prep work. You've made a list. You've planned your route through the store. You ate your go-gurt at home before you left so you're not hungry. Who's a good little shopper? You are. You're a good little shopper. There is no way that you're going to get tricked into spending any extra money today. Now just Yes, I love it when you mention this kind of FPS version, the first player shooter version of it. Grab that shopping cart on your way into the store and you fade. Okay, so one last quick little lesson before we actually go inside the building. Do not use a shopping cart if a basket will suffice. It's been proven that having a shopping cart in and of itself increases your chances of buying. And the bigger your shopping cart, the more you typically buy. That's why the average shopping cart has nearly tripled in size since it was first invented in 1937. Grocery stores keep ordering larger and larger ones because they know you're going to want to fill that cart more and more. All right, back to first person shopping mode. You've put the cart back and you're 100% ready to beat the grocery store. You estimate that the items on your list should wine, pasta, meatballs, pasta sauce, avocado, go girl. Come to about 30 bucks in total. So here we go. The race against decision fatigue begins now. Right as you enter, boom, seasonal treats on display tables. Now, you don't stop to purchase any of them, but they do remind you of some summertime holidays and events coming up soon, like barbecues, Independence Day, Labor Day weekend. Your mind starts to wander, if only for a moment. Wait a minute, what are my plans for Labor Day weekend? Am I allowed to wear white before or after Labor Day? Is that even still a thing anymore? Should I be picking up some barbecue supplies while I'm here at the store? Do I really need to see my neighbors to celebrate this? You just start spiraling out of control and you just entered the grocery store, but you take a deep breath and you snap out of it. The display table trick won't work on you. No, sir, it's still early in the shopping trip and decision fatigue hasn't set in, but you did have to use a lot of decision-making energy to get out of that downward spiral. <laughs> Sorry, grocery store, not today, or at least not yet. You can't trick this savvy <laughs> shopper into buying a delicious item that is not on my list. But now a smell hits your nostrils. Dear viewer, if smell-o-vision existed, oh, the smells that would enrapture your nose. These scents elicit cozy, homey feelings, nostalgia, even. You start to feel as hungry as you would be when you walk into your grandma's house for Thanksgiving dinner. And well, yes, they do offer baked goods and cooked meats in your supermarket. Even this seductive aroma could be a lie. Grocery stores have been known to use machines to circulate scents through the air in an effort to draw you even further down the rabbit hole with scent marketing. The smells these machines circulate can be specific to different regions of the store, such as grapefruits in the produce section or chocolate in the candy aisle, all of which make you more susceptible to buying. But you hold strong for now and power through through the gauntlets of the- But the decision power just dropped. But I didn't know that they can actually have this kind of scent marketing. 
The more you know, I guess. The bakery section, and to your first stop, the produce section. A few psychological tactics you should be aware of are at play here. According to a 2017 Butler University study, if shoppers stock up on beautiful, aspirational, healthy food early in their shopping trip, they feel good about themselves. And that means they're more likely to reward themselves with treats that are less healthy and probably more expensive later on in their shopping trip. That's why the produce sections are often placed near the entrance, and it's also why grocery stores go to great lengths to make their produce look absolutely stunning. For instance, store lighting may be specifically chosen to make produce appear shinier. And the real reason that the produce is sprayed with that sweet, gentle mist every 15 minutes? It's not to make the veggies dewy and fresh, it's just to make the veggies look dewy and fresh. According to Martin Lindstrom, the water only makes the produce spoil faster. That's right, it's all BS done for aesthetics to get you to pick up that shiny bunch of kale. Anyway, you have a couple produce items on your list, so you pick them out. In the process, you have to decide, is this one right? Is it not? Is it too bruised? How many do I get? A lot of decisions are happening in this first section, but... A lot of decision power! But your decision-making energy is still strong. You're sticking to your list, you're buying healthy food, you're feeling pretty great about yourself right now. And why shouldn't you? I mean, just look at those hands. Now it's time for you to enter the endless aisles of miscellaneous products. Wow, just look at all those shelves, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And that's not just you, there are, in fact, more product options available than ever these days. According to Michael Ruhlman, author of the book Grocery, The Buying and Selling of Food in America, the average grocery store stocks about 40,000 to 50,000 products on their shelves. This number has skyrocketed since the 90s, when the typical grocery <gasps> store only stocked about 7,000. And if it takes you a while to find what you're looking for, hey, that is great news to the retailer. In fact, it's intentional on their part. Aisle ordering and product groups aren't always intuitive, ensuring that you really have to keep searching to find what you need, and along the way you're gonna find a couple things that you want. According to Deakin University marketing professor Paul Harrison, grocers put the most important items in the middle of the aisle, so you have to walk past a whole lot of other products to find what you're actually after. Oh, and another thing to keep in mind, grocery stores also arrange products on the shelves in a very intentional way when it comes to height. Often huh. the most expensive items, or at least the ones that they want you to buy, are typically at eye level, where you're most likely to notice them, while the cheaper options are placed lower down. See? Expensive brand up here, inexpensive down here. Expensive here, inexpensive down here. By the time you reach the end of the aisle, you might be getting a bit exasperated, which means your friendly neighborhood <sighs> grocers have you exactly where they want you. The Super grocery! Products at the end of the aisle are often what the store is pushing the hardest. These yeah. end caps, as they're called in the grocery biz, are considered prime real estate. Often Sometimes the bigger and more well-known brands will pay a slotting fee to be featured in the end cap, and it can cost companies as much as one million dollars to land them on the supermarket dollars. monopoly board. But it can be worth it for them. According to the National Retail Hardware Association, a product being sold in the end cap will sell eight times faster wow. than the same product simultaneously being shelved elsewhere in the aisle. Oh, and wow. would you look at that? Some patriotic ping pong balls. Ah, what the heck? It's only a few bucks. You assure yourself that this is not the result of decision fatigue. You want these ping pong balls because holidays are fun, and gosh darn it, you're fun. Or at least Illusion. you pretend to be. At the very, very least, you convince yourself that you pretend to be fun. Convince. Into the basket it goes! You can always put it back later, if you change your mind, right? Lugging your increasingly heavy basket, you finally arrive at the dairy section. Time to stock up on those go-gurts! Now, normally, you limit yourself to one box of go-gurts per week. After all, they're a fun treat for special occasions, but then again, you did buy that beautiful produce earlier, so you kinda deserve it just this once, and you walked a lot through this store. Your pedometer reading's probably going insane today. So you nab two boxes of Gogurt and begin your trek to the checkout line. By the time you get there, you're eager to leave, but uh, gum! Can't have too much gum. As you place the items on the conveyor belt, you realize that that ping pong ball purchase was a mistake. I mean, what are you thinking? You don't even own a ping pong table, you don't like beer for beer pong, and you don't have any friends for any other pong-related activities, so you should definitely put this one back on the shelf real quick, but uh, a line is formed behind you and now you're trapped. And again, this is not an accident. According to Business Insider, quote, grocery stores have also made their checkout lanes purposefully narrow. This is to ensure that when you're unloading, if you suddenly realize you've impulsively and regretfully thrown in a $15 small bottle of freshly squeezed orange juice, it's too hard to get back out of the checkout lane to go and put it back. So you just bite the bullet. Oh well, looks like you're the proud owner of patriotic ping pong balls now. Now comes the moment of truth. Will your total come in under the $30 
dollar bar you set. Sure, you bought a holiday item that wasn't on your list, implanted in your brain by that bakery display table you saw when you first walked in, and executed on by the product's high traffic end cap placement, then you also bought that gum for, why, why did you buy that gum again? And sure, many of the products you bought wound up costing more than expected, you fell for the trap of buying the expensive product up near your eye line as opposed to the cheaper products shelved down below your feet, and yeah, that extra box of Go-Gurt cost you too. Although, that one hurts a little bit less than the other mistakes. Man, oh man, are you gonna enjoy the heck out of that Go-Gurt. And that's when the total flashes across the screen, 62 bucks. <laughs> You failed in your mission. You fell for the tricks. You are now a statistic. But hey, could have been worse. At least you didn't opt for the shopping cart earlier. Anyway, thanks for doing this immersive little experiment with me. Sorry it didn't turn out better for you, but these stores are good at what they do. So will grocery stores stop waging psychological warfare on us anytime soon? Don't bet on it. But it helps to be aware of their tactics and the psychology behind it all. While shopping, try not to lose sight of the fact that your grocery store is playing with your emotions. They make you feel good about yourself inciting you to buy fresh, healthy things first so you can treat yourself to the more base desires you just can't kick later on. They overwhelm you sensorily and with choices. They let you lose yourself in a labyrinth of things that you don't want or need until your decision-making energy is at a complete low. Until you become convinced that you both want and need those things before you finally find the thing that you actually came for. So go in with a plan and make your trip efficient. That is the surest way to beat the grocery store. Also, I'd like to mention that Gogurt was in no way a sponsor for today's episode. I just find Gogurt and the idea that it's yogurt in a tube that they encourage you to glurp hilarious. Not that we wouldn't do a sponsored Gogurt episode if they asked. We totally would. Big Yogurt, contact me. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thank now you so that I've worn you down with an entire episode, make the impulsive decision to subscribe to Food Theory. Go ahead, subscribe. hit that button. You've earned it. And get this, Food Theory has five episodes out right now. So, I don't know, maybe go chow down on another one right this ah. very moment. Like this one, that shows you how to get the most fast food fry for your dollar. That's right, here at Food Theory, we're always looking out for you, the consumer. Watching this channel will save you money. That sounds like a pretty yeah. good reason to subscribe to this channel, right? Thank so you. subscribe, people. Okay, that's probably enough of me shilling. My voice is starting to go, so I'm off to work on more food theory videos. You know that there's a theory or two coming out about Diet Coke down the pipeline, so get ready, friends. <laughs> Diet Coke. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video very interesting to watch. It's quite enjoyable and quite unique to watch, isn't it? If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Don't forget to follow my channel, and sincerely appreciate all for sports and encouragement for my work. Thank you all so much for the best, and I hope to see you all in my next video. But, hey, that's just a theory, a film, a game, food, but hey, that's just a theory, a food theory, bon appetit, um, thank you. And I hope to see you all in my next video, bye bye, thank you so much, subscribe, subscribe, thank you, subscribe. Alright, okay. Hmm, the more you know, learn something new. Like genuinely learn something new. Learn a lot new from how do you how do you strategize, how do you plan properly lah. The more you know I guess.